So we have the minutes from January 23rd. Because our week, we've been fighting to get more weekday rounds, and we've had no problems with our weekends. And yeah. um, well, and we got the cots. So our, our thought process on that was put the you know put the dollar on the cot as well as the weekend rate. You have to pay for the cots moving forward. So we'll fund the new cots. Help fund the new cots. <coughs> Help fund the new cots. What, have, what, have we surveyed the, our competitors? <coughs> yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. It's I can do it. Um, every time I've checked, we've been behind um, their rates. We've always been the, the low ball. Um, I, I know McCoy's got a little bit more competitive last year, um, so I can check with them. But I, I, I still, uh, if I recall, our outing rates and our weekend rates and um, our weekday rates were even still below this last year. How about how the cart fees? <clears throat> cart fees. How do we compare it to the rest of the We when we went up to a, basically a dollar uh, a hole um, to eighteen dollars for the round. That was um, what the competitors were at. So, and that's why we made that move. Much up want to justify our carts, but to. Get, get to that point um, competitively with, our, with the market. I think our rates are maybe just a hair lower, and, but our course is much better. <coughs> and the only thing that's holding us back is the clubhouse. <coughs> and a lot of people will go to a place where they can, you know, play a little bit of golf and then relax and have a, have a drink and a sandwich and something like that, even if they have to pay a little bit more mm -hmm. for the green fee or something like that. So, I mean, we're at a, a handicap already with that clubhouse. <coughs> uh, as long as we can keep the people coming in, I think it's a, it's a good deal if we just probably just try to hold it for what we're doing. I agree with that. I hold off. Yeah, we did it last year. Year. We've been yeah. kind of doing it every other year. So yeah. Last yeah. Year. I mean, you, know, you, you don't want to drive the people away. I mean, if they, they look at a brighter side, they say, well, we can get out. You know, we'll have a beer and a sandwich and all that stuff someplace else. And so the first, a, the, the, first thing, you know, the first thing when they come back is say, oh look, the rates haven't changed. Right. That will be the first thing on their and on their plate. Okay. 
your first thing that comes out of one of the league guys' mouth every time you go up. Oh, you went up another dollar? Even if we didn't go up a dollar, they always come back expecting that we went up a dollar. So it, the first week you're kind of uh, breaking it down to the customer, letting them know, listen, this is where we stand. Nothing's changed. Uh, pass all the programs the same. Our rates are the same, and which I can kick off the season. Uh, the first comes to wish, you know, <clears throat> Go up in the middle of the season. Or, or the, yeah, we could always review this at a later you know, date. Review it at a later date. You know, that's what I would. I would make a motion to keep it as a visit. Review it at, at, a, at a later later date if we could. Well, it could generate some some comparative comparative information. From well, that's what I'm saying. You know, <coughs> stop it. Yeah. 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 I'm just surprised that they would. I mean, uh, if 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 my rate went up a buck. So be it. I mean, I can see where three, four, five bucks it might complain a little bit. But yeah, we little say that every year though, going up a dollar, and and you pull up the old uh, the old rate board when we were at thirty dollars. We're not at thirty dollars anymore. You know what I mean? We're we're at sixty-seven bucks on the weekend with a cop. That's that's yeah, our that prime time rate. Yeah, that's sixty-seven on the weekend with a cart. So that's what uh, forty-nine for if you're walking, <coughs> roughly. Yeah. So. I just said because the, it's, I mean, everything that we have to buy is, it's just keeps on going up and up and up and up and we just can't, you can't buy things anymore for the price of these are line items in many respects are stay, stay right there. We're within a percent or two when they, when the goods that we need to purchase are going up three or four or five percent. So we we making that as an official motion then, Bob, to at least hold them steady for now, and then we'll and just review it, review it in a yeah. you know, month or so. I mean, once once we get open, I'll do it for a month or so. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Review it needed. Scorecard. <laughs> the the, uh, the scorecard um, is. The distances have been approved by Ed, and I was waiting upon opening to put in the order for uh, for the scorecards. So um, everything the um, USGA has uh, given us the ratings, slope of ratings for all all of our combination holes. Um, Ed has signed off on the distances. And they've uh, rated it according to those distances. Um, so Isaac and I uh, reviewed it um, and said as soon as we open up. We'll sit down, get a, um, a proof, submit it to you guys to check it out, <coughs> give it a check mark, and, and run it. So we're going to see a markup? Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> How long does it take to get? What's our card situation? I've got um, I've got two full boxes, so that's why I was like, I've got enough to start the season so we can kind of review this thing and then put it in order, and it should be a problem. So we be, be okay to an April, May? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yep. And we're hoping we'll still have our sponsor on the cards. Yes, uh, I spoke to him. I'm actually trying to work on um, another vendor to uh, see if they want to get on the card in the spot where um, I put the um, the season pass holder. Put them in that spot. Uh, keep a cushion at Creamery in their spot, and uh, and move forward. What are they? What are they paying for that? Uh, I think we agreed with them for uh, I think it was like four. Four hundred dollars, something like that. Four, four hundred. That's all. Yeah. Okay, it was. It was you know pretty much interested is uh, Tony. Antonio. Uh, yeah. I'm now seeing this next week. I'll let well, him know that's what it is. Uh, he'll give up four hundred bucks. He's stupid. Not to. We do send a lot of our business to yeah. uh, um, the surrounding restaurants. Yeah. Obviously, we have. A limited fanfare for you know if you're hungry we can give you something but if you want something a little bit more if they ask for recommendations we point them to the local eateries captain's place and Antonio yeah, I'll see you. <coughs> you look for sponsors for the cards yeah people are interested we can we can create that you know build that program up it's been working well I speak with the uh, gentleman over the cushion and creamy when he comes through and golfs and uh, they get them all the time so. It's not, they're not over uh, uh, 
inundated by uh, our cards, but we have a lot of customers that come, and who doesn't like ice cream, fresh ice cream in the summertime? It's, it's right on the exit. We obviously haven't been very successful with the advertising on the tea markers. Any chance of having Krishna Creamer use them as an example? We could, we could um, approach them, them. Maybe, maybe swap them maybe over to you. Uh, grab us for the first six months or whatever. Sure. Yeah, I can approach them. Get, get one set up. That, uh, get to see a real sample. Yeah. sample. yeah. That would be a good way to get other people more in yeah. interest. Maybe, yeah. There's enough people that own business. <laughs> what, what, what are we charging for, for advertising in the markets? Um, we had a whole program set up. I think we were some, I thought we were, again, I thought we were somewhere in 700, 800 for, it was somewhere like for multiple, it was multiple years though. It wasn't just one year. Yeah, we had like a one, two, or three year rate yeah. if you look back. Yeah. If you, if you could find out. Jack, could you let me know, please? Yeah, absolutely. Anyone else with the scorecard? <coughs> Maybe move on to Clubhouse update. Club trail. Yeah, um, that's, Jim was pulling up, uh, yeah. I think we put a time window uh, of 2025 or 2024. He did say he was going to put together a cost analysis. Um, I haven't spoken with him. Uh, this what, what's happened, you, myself, and Andy <coughs> met with him. Mm -hmm. And he had talked about working with the old colony um, draft department or whatever. Yeah, he, he said with his software, he could he could draw up a real rough draft, but then we push it further through Old Colony's program and see if we get some additional ideas from their program, and then we'll put it all together. But in the meantime, he had an idea of square footage, and he was going to give us a cost analysis we, of supplies. Since that time, Manny and I <coughs> met with him again. Mm -hmm. He had a draft of the clubhouse, and what he was going to do is go back to Old Colony and get it, have the, the building department or whatever okay. work on yeah. an estimate of material. Mm -hmm. okay. And he suggested that um, he would be ready to meet again with us sometime in March. Manny's coming back for four days, March 17th through the 20th. I recommend that we try to schedule something with you, Dana. Um, I will not be here, mm -hmm. but maybe John I'll go. Yeah. to yeah. deal with the kitchen yeah. and Mandy. So I'll try to schedule that day. All right. That's what are they? Um, what are they using to base the square footage size on? Uh, Eighty by forty-eight. I know, but, but why did they choose that number? Um, Sprinkler system, stay underneath yeah. the sprinkler system. You need to keep Cold. under. Okay, I, I didn't know if they had thought there's, about there's you know, what they wanted to, you know, the number of people you know, they wanted to serve. Yeah, no, you want to avoid the million dollar sprinkler system. And the most that that would hold like is 54 <laughs> carts underneath. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> the next year you have to do something gauge. else to get uh, other 20. areas for, um, for uh, recharging the carts. But anyway, it's a start. Yeah. So hopefully at the next meeting we'll have a rough estimate of building costs. And then we'll go from there. Okay. This is far better than where we had first discussed to have it done third party and they were going to bill out at forty or fifty thousand dollars for yeah. these ideas where yeah. Jim's doing it yeah. in house. Enough. Now the up the, the as far as the materials will go, you know that it, it all comes down to the actual time we end up. Right. Well, that's what so we're doing. Big point. It's going to fluctuate. Yeah. Jim's big point was the yeah. sooner you commit to it, like he can kind yeah, of commit to your, yeah. your building supply number. But if, mm -hmm. if you know, he gives us a number now and we do it five years from now, the number's not going to be the same. No, it's probably not. <laughs> it may be in a ballpark. Is there any way we're getting 
grant money to uh, to, to build stuff, for, uh, you know, to uh, assist on the building. Of. We have to talk to uh, the only grants that I've heard through from Jim are the ones that pertain to the energy, the solar panels on the roofs. Well, they, they, and, they've got grant money for for the pot <coughs> and things like that. To build well, the other thing you could probably yeah, but that's, do is that's a nonprofit. They don't make any money there. We well, make money, so I don't think well, they charge to play there. Yeah, well, you could you could probably that. look at um, since you're a recreational facility, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, community preservation, you know, uh, what do they call it, okay, CP something. Yeah, CP, yeah. CP, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, if you renovate a church under it, I think you can. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. Uh, I mean, it is recreation. Talk to community preservation. Yeah. But I think there's different aspects of recreation. Yeah. Well, not to hurt the channel, right. Right, Jack? No, 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 no. When we get over the closer, it can't be hard to at least look. No. All you know, we can say is no. No. But it'd be, a, it'd be a great thing if we could get a few bucks on it. And, uh, well, you could add, I mean, you maybe to, to focus on a certain aspect of it, whether it be you know, electrical or, or, right. or you know, just to help maybe mitigate yeah. costs. Can you schedule for a few weeks? Car path on number 13. Well, um, Dan and I have discussed the, uh, discussed the car path. He gave me some, um, some information on uh, you know, material costs. Um, and he'd, he'd said, you know, right now they don't have, you know, he, after he and I discussed it, um, we looked at a, uh, he recommended a, uh, a minimum of a six inch base. And he said, well, he said, one of the bigger problems with a lot of the car paths we have out there now is that there is no base. That one on the eighth hole, they put asphalt on dirt, basically. And that's why it freezes and thaws and cracks so much. Um, but we looked at uh, we looked at the length, we're basically looking at an eight foot wide car path, approximately 825 to 850 feet long. Um, Right now, I mean, it's it has been a little bit wet over there. It's a little bit drier now. Um, you know, and he said, you know, he said if I'm going to, he said since I'm going to be in there, and I'm going to be cutting that out and moving material around and putting the base down, he said, you know, he he said as far as he was concerned, you might as well have black top it right then. He said if you've got to come back and. You know, a year or two later, and, and blacktop it. Then he's got to regrade it and do do all that additional work. And we looked at it. We said, you know, we might be able to take some of the material up closer to the T end and use that to build up down where the uh, wetter portion of that area is, as it wraps around the uh, that little drainage area between 13 and 14. So I, mean, I looked at. I didn't do. I wanted to check with him on his uh, his number for his number for asphalt. Because the other thing he said that the, the crushed uh, the aggregate or the crushed black top crushed concrete combination. He doesn't have any of that. He doesn't grind it at this time of the year, so he doesn't have any available to, to do any work with it right now. He said he'd probably start grinding it up again here once you know things warmed up and it wasn't so wet. He said he doesn't get a very good grind at all when it's uh, when it's wet like that. Um, how wide? How wide were they in the path today? Eight feet, eight feet, like all the rest of them. So you're looking at 850 foot length and eight foot width. The depth of the base would be six inches. The, so for that, you need 125. 0.93 yards, basically 126 yards, which calculates out to 164 tons. I have to check on their conversion. Our conversion is usually 1.3 yards per ton. Um, base price per ton of that material is nine dollars and fifty cents. So you're probably looking at about 1,600, you know, 1,555, basically 1,600 dollars for the base mix. Now the asphalt, he said, um, I said I'd have to check on the price 
um, or what his uh, you know what his calculation is on the asphalt. I can, you know, you're looking at a three inch um, depth of uh, or basically a quarter foot of asphalt in, in, in a single lay. He could do, he said it doesn't make a difference to him whether he does two or one. He said he put a you know put a thicker aggregate on the bottom, put a smoother aggregate on the top. So you're probably you know looking at eight, again the same 850 feet by eight foot wide at a, at a, at a quarter or 0.25 foot depth comes out to 63 yards. Uh, the base mix volume is 82 tons, and then the base base price per ton is 67 dollars per ton. So, but I want to go back and check with him and see what his uh, his feeling on that is. I'm not quite sure whether there's you need to have you know. A, if you figure in uh, an X percentage of, of error or overspill or, you know, the, the, the machine, you know, the uh, machine, um, you have to keep on filling it so you don't run light in the, in the bed of the machine so that your mix gets thinner. So I'm not sure if there's a percentage error in there, but that number comes to about 5,484 uh, if you multiply 67 by 82 tons. So you're probably looking at a at a cost of around seven seven thousand seven thousand five hundred to do that cart path. It's just the question of whether or not you run into anything along the way that might might add to your cost. I don't think you are going to. That doesn't include addressing the water situation down around the corner where we may have to put in a I don't know, an equalizer drain tile just so, because if we build it up a little bit so the car path runs a little bit higher and is, it, you know, is, is not sitting down in the wet area, then we're going to have to allow the water to escape somewhere. And we looked at it, we might be able to catch it, depending on how high we raise it, we might be able to get it up just enough so we have the 1% slope so we get the water to run in the direction it sits. And normally, over there right now, the water doesn't run per se, it just sits there and stays yeah. wet. So. Now, wh while he's out there, can you get some kind of clue what number eight would cost to repair? Well, I mean, he, he said to say, it's basically the same thing. It's, you know, you measure your length, and we did that before. That's, it's not a lot there, though, right? Well, you have, y your distance on eight is, Depending on which way you go, it's 700 feet. If uh, I think I measured about 700, I have to go back and check. If you go down the left-hand side, it's behind. The problem with eight, the repair of the existing is you got to run. And I think one of the reasons why they didn't dig down quite so far is because they ran it right by all those pine trees, and you've got the roots of those pine trees coming up with blacktop right now. So you cut down six inches. But you know that where the where the water collects there when it yeah. overflows. What's the fix on that? Well, the fix on that is to go to the other side and bypass that all together because then you, could re then you could reshape the front portion of that T and try to get the water to go to the left of the hole where it wants to go now anyway. It's just that the grade isn't right and it kind of comes down and then it sits. Yeah. And it comes, what happens, the water comes off of nine and it comes off of that side and, right. it, and it collects and in there between <clears throat> eight and nine. Yeah. And then there's a drain pipe between the blue, uh, white and blue tee and the gold tee that kicks the water through to the left-hand side. But that drain pipe only catches a portion of that water. The rest of it runs down. I mean, it's only the six-inch drain. The rest of it runs down, and it goes to the right side of the ladies' tee and comes out onto the cart path. Then it comes down the cart path, going to the left side where it wants to go. If we can reshape the front of that, regrade it, run it under the, the new cart path, and kick it over to the left, you probably solve most of that moisture problem. And then you don't have the pine tree roots. Then you don't have to deal with the pine tree roots. And I don't know. I mean, you know, some of those trees down there. I haven't been down there. I mean, and um, in, in, uh, we lost a top of one of the trees down there. Um, well, I've been working on the eight and nine. <coughs> excuse me. In between eight and nine. Yeah, we lost um, in not this weekend, but the prior weekend where they had the fifty Ooh, or sixty mile well. an hour winds. We lost one. Uh, how many have I cleaned up so far? Seven trees. Two behind the uh, the seventh tee, an oak and a pine. One um, couple uh, uh, 
the dead ones here and there. Um, the larger pine on the right side of uh, the uh, fourth hole up uh, between the trap and, and the yeah. front of the green. We lost another one behind the ladies tee on, on three, or excuse me, on five. <clears throat> but um, by disturbing that area and digging that up, I think you might open yourself up to having more of a loss in some of those trees. There's some of those trees at the end of that cart path where it turns to the ninth hole that have to be taken, should be taken out anyway. That back tee on that ninth hole gets absolutely no sun. sun. Right. And this past, you know, in these years where there's a significant amount of moisture, it's difficult to keep decent grass on it because the disease just, you know, that's the weeds on the left are getting a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. They're growing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well, they, of course they tend, tend to do that, but we could uh, we could clean some of those out. And like I said, I, I think it would be you know um, just as easily accessed going around the left. But to fix that, I mean, it's basically the same thing: the amount of mix, the width, the length, and, and the only other issue there is access. Who, how are you going to come in there? Oh, yeah, that's um, and that was something that you know was basically um, I I spoke with the neighbor and. Um, he seemed to be, um, you know, um, had no issue with us coming in, but he needed to, you know, he needed to know when and, and how it was going to occur because um, he has animals down there yeah, and he needs right. to get them yeah. on a daily basis and so on. And Dan said going in or out of there, he could fix it, you know, when he was exiting, it wouldn't be a significant issue. It was just getting the actual trucks down in there because they're, they're bigger. Uh, bigger equipment to get in there. But um, we're working, uh, you know, Dan was by today, we were working on uh, uh, pulling out the stumps and, and moving the gazebo and getting that ready to pour the pad and all, and all that good stuff. So when, when it gets drier, we can go out there and, and look at doing, uh, you know, um, lay that out and, and see what he, he has for an estimate on, on time. You know, if it stays dry, if it were to stay dry, we could get in there and get it done. I'm just wondering how how long that's going to last because we'll either come. The best way for us to come is to come off of the uh, um, come into the golf course off the left side of 15, and by the time we get the es you know the excavator down there to dig and trucks for base and trucks for asphalt, you're going to have some. Some, uh, some tire track and some ruts, and you're going to do a number on that little cart path that runs around behind the 15th green, too. So you probably have to go all the way down. Um, we can't go across the bridge, so we'd have to at least go to the between the 14th tee and the 14th fairway and cut across to get there um, in order to get the material um, and move it around. Couldn't come from, you know, we couldn't come off the other side because you'd have to come. The only way you could get across is um, down by the, uh, the pump station. That would make a much longer trip all the way down to the to uh, to bring material in and, and, and move it around. So we've looked at, we've got an idea of what the cost is going to be. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have a, a, a date to start doing something because that all depends on his availability. So it looks like if we, if we do the cart path on 13, we can do the stone cart path for probably less than 5,000. Yeah, I'd say if you went with the base and with the crushed material on top, yeah, you'd probably be less than 5,000. And, and if we do the base with asphalt, we look at somewhere maybe around... 7,000, 7,100. And like I said, I, again, I don't know if they figure in a, a, an area, an error or a fudge factor. I know when we always, when we do construction for tees and other things, we do a compaction factor because um, the, the root zone mix compacts, so we put a, we put a uh, three to five percent figure in there just to be um, uh, more accurate with our estimates. I don't know if they do that with asphalt or not, so I'll have to ask him about that. What do you think? Well, we, we still have the 150000 from the Article 9. Mm -hmm. And it's the difference between five and 10000 Or seven, right? Yeah, seven. Yeah, right. Seven. 
I go with the sun. Yeah. Go with the sun. Get it all done. Yeah. I have that crunch rock where I have my motor home. And it packs down really good, but when you start turning the wheels back and forth, it loosens up. It loosens up. Yeah. And the way people drive these golf carts around. Yeah. All right. You know, you'll have that stuff spread all over the all over the fairway. Yeah, right. 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 Another. Well, Dan said it would be it would be easier for him to do all in one shot. All in one shot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it would be a much much better job. And for an extra, be an extra little, it's about it's fourteen hundred dollars or so. Yeah. Yeah. What the heck? So no brain. Yeah, oh, with that, get it all done. That's the end. Try to do it right. Yeah, so we have the money. I just so if we put the motion maybe to keep it one hundred ten thousand. Yeah. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. How do you feel about that? No. That way, there's a little bit of leeway in case he said there's a yeah. you know, percentage back or some other repairs that you want. Know, it comes real roughly, it would say it comes to about $9 per linear foot, slightly less actually. So if there's 50 if, feet if, here or whatever. If in fact it, it's, uh, he, he, Dan can, uh, do, can do this, Yeah. we got like 1,200 or 1,300 feet on 12 and uh, 14. Um, it sounds like a reason. Yeah, I mean, I think 14. Yeah, I don't know if you were to keep people to the left side of the 14th fairway. I don't necessarily know if you really have to put one all the way down 14 because it's higher and it stays stays dry. And yeah. Our problem is the, you know, I don't know if the, you know the first the first bunker on the left hand side of the 14th fairway. Yeah. From there down is where it would get wet. From there up, it, it usually stays pretty dry. So I mean, the biggest problem is 12 and 13. Because once you get to 14, then you get to 15, 15, you got a car path all the way around. Yeah. So 12 and 13 are really only problems. And then again, 15, you know, are you going to leave it the way it is? You know, we may, you know, coming in, coming in through that gate with asphalt trucks. I mean, you're talking uh, 82 tons of uh, material. material, not counting the truck, plus getting the excavator in there to dig with whether he's going to bring that. Maybe he brings the mini and tobacco. I don't know, but you know you're probably going to do some tearing up by that entrance where that gate is. So the time we do might, that though was after all these projects. Oh yeah, we one you're back right? now. You know, we, yeah. So if you're going to finish, uh, or at least make it so um, it's easier to get the trucks in there and turn. I mean, he may have to do something right. uh, initially just so you can get the big trucks in there and have them turn because yeah. that's this awful tight turn. Um, I mean the the, the Porta potty man can't make it. He pulls. Well, he pulls up and then he drives down <coughs> around. So. Okay. Yeah, so we got that. We could always revisit if we really needed to. So we got a motion and a second for up to ten thousand. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Bunker elimination. That's that's for you folks to decide. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of for a while. So a lot of bunkers. Which one is that? What we're talking about? Well, what? The last time I met with Steve, I encouraged him to identify one a bunker amongst the ones we okay. have yeah. highlighted and start to put a plan together to eliminate those bunkers. Yeah. My favorite bunker to fill in would be half of the one in the third hole. Because at the same time we could fix the drainage and we could make that a better, the more playable. Yeah, on the left hand side, make it more of a playable hole. And number three is the last bunker I want to see. Oh, okay. I'm not eliminating it. I'm, you know, we're so you're, you're, you're making it, it small. From the beginning, halfway. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. It's just that it's just that that one would be. And, and again, I mean, that's bunkers that are in in worse shape. And um, and you know that's well, that was all rock. Less, I mean, if you're talking if you're if you're talking filling them in, <coughs> that's one thing as opposed to rebuilding them. That's something else altogether. Right, so what does that one pertain? Does well, the third mean, hole. I mean, rebuild? I think the the first portion of the bunker. I mean, we had Mel Lucas said the same said it, and 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 uh, uh, the other fella um, said the same thing that it's. It's significantly large, 
at this end, you're penalizing the, the shorter end closer to the tee, you're penalizing people who don't hit the ball well anyway. And the water comes off the, I mean, he said it's just, it was a design disaster because the water comes off the fairway, sheets into the bunker, washes from the back end to the front end where it pools because the drain is clogged. I found, I know where the drain outlet is, but I can't find the drain inlet in the bunker until I dig it down, you know, probably another foot or so. So if you're looking at like half of that. So I may, or I just suggest that because None. it has more of an None impact of on None. playability. I'm I'm with it. I'm with John somewhat on number eight. I think those bunkers. I hate those. Well, no, I don't bother me. Well, you don't. You, you don't. You don't like them from the standpoint of playing well, the green. green. You don't play the same as green. green. So oh, yeah. Well, the bunkers on eight is a simple. It's just to raise it up. Well, yeah. well that's an easy. And again, I mean, we talked about that when we were talking about. My my the thing with those bunkers is there's already trouble all over that place, and, and those bunkers are from a maintenance part of view must be a pain. Because they're always out of sand. Well, well the, the bunker on eight is all, it's always wet. Yeah, yeah. it's just like cement. The reason, the reason why I put it on the agenda is that getting, we need to identify a bunker and an easy one to eliminate. Okay. Right. And get to it. If you can get to it, eliminate it. Okay. Uh, it could be difficult getting to it back and forth with a tractor or whatever. Front of folks would be the best bet, and we, you know, yeah. that's all we have. Right, so, <laughs> what, 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 is your, what, what, what do you want to see? I though? want something that's simple that he can work on in between whatever, like the uh, second bunker on the left on the 18. Well, oh, again, the rock. That, that's the rock. Yeah, you don't need that. No, no right. No, that, you say, what you're saying we don't need that. Do you know that my guy spent, you know, four or five days last year? Cleaning that out, putting a liner in it, recutting the edge, and putting new sand in it because we said at that time it was an eyesore. Now you're going, I'm going to go back and tell them, okay, guys, let's go back out there and fill it in. And that, and that happened just about the time when we were identified the bunkers to eliminate. So, and that was on the list. All right, how about another one that's accessible? The, uh, the one on five before the hill. Right. Well, that little thing, yeah. I mean, front, oh, you yeah. redid that one too. Yeah, you just shaped. Well, we re we line. just shaped it because there was a big rock in it that the DCW pulled one. out for us. So I'm saying, pick one that you can get to easily. I just, you know, I just want before before we just start taking a, a plethora of bunkers and filling them in. I just want everybody to think about, you know, your golf course and what your golf course looks like, and you say, okay, I'm going to fill this one. I'm going to fill this one. I'm going to fill that one. Are we filling them? Just because they are we filling them because they're they don't I would say not playable. Non, I would are say non-functional. Well, I mean, I, well, the be. first one, the, the one on five, I agree with. It's non-functional. Right. It's, it's a penal bunker for people who don't hit the ball well. But no. are we filling them that for that reason, or are we filling them because we don't want to spend the money to repair them, or why are we filling them? I mean, you want me to because fill a bunker? I fill a bunker. We don't want to spend the money to repair them. But what happens you in the do, future when you don't have any bunkers cars. and you do have money, we're either cut new ones in or how no, no, I, I, I think if we stay focused on, on the, the outliers. I so think there were some design flaws in that, and the reason <coughs> being is because I don't I my my opinion was it is, is that it makes the course look good. Do do they need yeah, to be there? Aesthetically pleasing. That one on five has no reason. It's a little short one, yeah. The one on the right hand side that's yeah. the one yeah. that she's talking about on eighteen. No, it's how how many times, uh, to be honest with you, if, if you were to touch that for a month, I wouldn't even know. In the first bunker on the right. I don't think there's people, I, you know, a, a, as many times yeah, as I go on. If they, the one that catches <laughs> it all is to the right side. The, the one on that left is so yeah. far away from where it, it looks should nice. be. It looks nice. Yeah, it does look nice. I'll give you that. If that was the reason they put it there, they did the right thing. If that reason was for them to put it there to have people get penalized for going over there, it's, it's the wrong thing. Right. I guess they probably, when they design it, there's a little bit of both. There's aesthetics. Yeah, well, it, the bunkers are there for to shape a hole, to make people decide about how they're going to hit the ball and how they're going to approach their shot. And they're put in specific areas to challenge people whether or not you can you can can you hit it can you hit past mm -hmm. it should i hit 
should should I hit the layup short of it? You're, right. right. you're, you're absolutely there. right. But I, look, look at it as somebody playing. Well, I'm not arguing. I mean, you guys would fill them in. I'll fill every damn one of them in. I mean, I don't, I don't care. But I just you think know, that, I, mean, look, I think I, after a while, you, you know, if, no, if you, mean, you just you want to sheet of green with a few. No, I think we should limit it. Obviously, we shouldn't go bunker filling crazy. But there, I think we can all agree that there are certain ones that we definitely won't miss and it won't impact. Well, like I um, said, and that one that you picked out was a perfect example. You got example. sixty bunkers if you drop to forty-eight or so. So you've got the one on the short, we've got the one five. on the right side of five, you have the two that on eight. That one's pretty dry and easy. And got easy yeah, that, that, that was, the first that was one not the five on the left. There's two on the left. First one can go. Oh, on five? Yeah. On the left? See in those, I see actually play. those, and I would say I see first, a, first one. I see a lot of guys that saves them from going into the waste area as yeah. it rolls and oh, yeah. kicks you're, into the You don't even see it. Yeah, the, yeah, the second one. Yeah, but well, both are both well, well, because behind the first one is is is, is the is hill grass right? area. Oh, the it, might, grass. it might keep the yeah, it might keep the uh, the ball in, in the play. I mean, if you were ever if you were ever thinking about uh, enlarging. T space and putting another T on uh, on that hole behind the uh, the uh, forward T on five that would probably come into play at that point. The other thing, I mean, it's a dog leg and it points that way. Right. A lot of people, I mean, they aim. Right they, at they aim. You know, <laughs> they, uh, whether they're yeah, conscious right. of whether they're doing it or not. But you know, the, the, you know I, that one. I mean, I've seen people in that way more often than not. The second one? Yeah, I'll put it down. Yeah. <laughs> the piece is the, well, first the first one, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ed was the first one. I mean, you know, but like I said, if you, you tell me you want to fill in, I'll fill them in. Now, we're just, you know, we're, we're running out of material to fill with, so we're going to have to buy the material to fill them in with. And, you know, I've mean, got some stuff on the back of the hill. I don't know if the fans... Wait, right. what's the priority of this? What do you think is the first one we should do? Five. You're asking me? Yeah. Five, five, or eighteen. He, the one on the left on eighteen, or the one on the right on five. Either one's fine with me. Whatever one you want. One on five is the easiest to get through. The one on eighteen is going to be. You have no direct access to it right, unless you cut across the fairway, and. Um, with the amount of material you're going to be hauling over there, I'd prefer to drive all the way down the cart path and up the rough along the edge of the woods. By the way, we've, we've cleared the left side of 18, eight feet into the woods. So if you hit your ball further than eight feet into the woods, you have a problem. But other than that, I always have the whole left hand side has been cleared up again. Yeah. So. <laughs> I have all 75 my ball. Move that move the bunker on the left. I don't know about 70. It was about 175 in there. That bunker on the right on five seems to be more on my yes. It's not aesthetic, it's not whatever, it's really not in play for anybody. It was just kind of, I don't know why they put it there, really, to be quite honest with you. Unless they had some ideas about, change, about changing, changing the that. Box. Well, not so much changing the tee box, they may have an original idea of, of you know where the tee and how the hole was going to play, and then they got halfway through and so well, this isn't going to work because we have because that hole. I mean, they started working on the right hand side, then they just stopped. They just stopped. They didn't do anything. There's a hole there. It's a mess. And if you go behind the green on the right hand side, they just took everything that was a mess, pushed it into the woods, and left it there. I mean, it's just this mound of so, see, like garbage. It's like it just stopped. Yeah. I, I, I fill in five first then. Take that. I'll, I'll make that. Uh, I'll second. Yeah, so I'll the first one on the right short. side. So all in favor? Yeah. And then we'll reassess. <laughs> we'll go on to another. And if you, I mean, if I can get down to eight, I mean, I can. You know, if you want me, I can fill those in. It's just that I, 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 I like to try to address the, the one on the left. The two on the we left. We talked about both of them. Yeah. yeah. Talked yeah. about the one. Yeah. The one. Furthest on the left. Left, yeah. Leave the one in front. But we can talk about that. Yeah, all right. Well, because there's this trouble. <laughs> I can see the Google Map picture that I fill up full of water. 
I'd like to see them both go and just slope. Oh, the, I mean, you, you can fill it in and, and, and regrade the slope and, and make it run down, but then, you, you know, I know they, they're not good, they're hard and they're yeah. wet, but if, if depending on how I regrade the slope, it's just going to kick somebody's ball into the water. Good. I mean, I, it, it's, it's, like I said, you want me to fill in all 50 well, some yeah. of them, I'll get a big old truck and, That's you know, tons of topsoil it, and fill them all in. It's just that there's, you know. Well, you clear all the woods and trees, too. That's where I play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need them to be more playable from not flooding all the time more. Just got rid of one of the two. Yeah, just make the grass thicker there. That's all. So do you want me to, uh, so we're going to definitely do number five first. We'll try to get to work on that as soon as we get to see if I can generate some material. Um, and then, I mean, do you want me to uh, do eight or do you want me to hold off on that or... Because if I can cut it out and I can start hauling material down there along the left-hand side, it's not too wet. Yeah, and, and I, you know how you, you know how number seven when you redid that, how the the grass on the hill is is thicker. Yeah. It that would be probably a good idea to do the same thing on that. So if someone does that, the yeah, yeah, it, right. it might catch the ball. <coughs> You know what I mean, Steve? Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't roll down the hill. Right. Well, less chance of it. Well, I can right bring it. I can. Be I can bring it a little bit. Yeah. You know, I can bring it a little bit level and then grade yeah. it down. And then so it, have and maybe put a little mound in the front so it yeah. takes it to the back. Buff thicker there. So if you go in there, then you're penalized. So you're hitting out of this rough and set up. Yeah. That and that's a hell of a lot harder than it is trying to place a shot coming out of the rough on that green than coming out of the bunker. All right. We've got repair maintenance repair costs. Well, back in the beginning or middle of November somewhere, and going over the budget, I saw that we were going to be <clears throat> predictably over budget in our in, in our uh, repair costs for our equipment. Uh, at this stage of the game, as of today. Uh, we spent $31,297 on repairing equipment, which puts us $6,297 over budget. $3,000 of that went into the repair of the chipper, which at the time I did this in November, I didn't realize that the chipper engine was going to die the second week of December, or first week of December, and cause us all these problems. Um, but I had estimated um, that the cost from November to June would have been about $7,000. Um, and I looked at areas where we could pull money from. I identified uh, a couple areas and where I could probably save about 7400 Right now I'm going to have to adjust that because I haven't touched the Sand Pro yet um, and I haven't touched the 3500 And 3500 is going to need a hydraulic oil change which is probably going to run a couple hundred bucks. That stuff costs about two hundred fifty dollars for a five-gallon pail. Um, I'm not quite sure what we're going to have to do with the sand pro. I also have to look at uh, our top dresser, um, tighten the belts, and see if that needs um, any work. Uh, it shouldn't need too much work. Um, we've got all the real mowers done, and it's just the other things like today. The uh, you know the. Uh, on our pole saw where the uh, the handle attaches to the saw it's is broken and it's it, the shaft inside bent a little bit so we can't use the pole saw anymore so you're probably looking at you know of trying to get a quick fix but it's the pole saw might have to be replaced but quick fix on that could be 150 175 bucks um, we have uh, and again just routine things that we we normally do. We have our bed knives, we have our reels sharp, and we've done the bearings and the seals on, uh, we only have one mower left to do where the reels have to be run through the machine. So I'm fairly confident with those. Um, it's just that I can't really predict those other nickel and dime costs that are going to jump up and bite you. Like um, 200 and, uh, what was it, $220 to replace the foot 
on the ends of the on the end of the brush saw because the bearings went in the foot. And you can't replace the bearings, you have to replace the whole the whole foot. So um, that's where we are. Like I said, right now we're six thousand two ninety seven and it's just that the things that are breaking down now are significantly more expensive than changing oil filters and doing bed knife bed knives and, and uh Fixing, fixing the occasional uh, uh, broken bolt or something, we're running into major, major repairs. Um, we just had, we had to just finish with the Ford, the uh, forty-five hundred that we're keeping, which was in fairly decent shape. But that, you know, overall property cost is about seven, seven hundred to a thousand to keep between uh, oil changes and hydraulic changes and the, you know, hydraulic fluid is uh, significantly more expensive than it. those machines, the bigger machines like that take, uh, you know, five, ten gallons. So that in itself is five hundred to seven hundred dollars right there. So, But we're keeping, you know, like I said, I, I'm confident that the equipment is in, it's in good shape. We repaired um, some issues that we had a significant problem with in getting parts simply because the equipment so old, and it's not so much that they don't have the part, it's that, for instance, John Deere changed people who made the radiators. Our machine, the one machine we had to place the radiator on, is almost 20 years old. Well, the radiator they changed to doesn't fit on our machine right. So we had to, uh, I mean, I actually asked them, they had three different radiators, we ordered, you know, we ordered one, and it was the wrong one, sent it back, ordered the next one. Was the wrong one, and they said, "Okay, well, the third one must be the right one, because that's what the book says. There's a part number. They sent it to us. It doesn't fit. They can't be replaced. so." I said, "Well, it can be, but I, you know, Norm looked at it. And he said, "No, I said I can, I can put this radiator in, and it'll fit, but I have to trim it down in the back." No, I mean the original radiator. <clears throat> no, no, um, it was, it was shot. It was leaking all over the place. So I told them, I said, well, I don't want, I, they said, before you trim that down, you, well, I called them up and said, listen, I said, have your technician come down here and look at it. And by the way, since your parts book's wrong, I'm not paying for your technician to come down and look. <laughs> so he came down and looked, and he did the exact same thing Norm was going to do. But I wasn't going to do that on the radiator, and then they tell me, well, you, you avoided this, yeah, this, that, and the other thing. So let them do it, and then, so it <laughs> fixed it, you know, it, it fixed it. it. Basically, you couldn't fasten it in because the fasteners were in the wrong spot. So we, we shaved it down. He shaved it down. We put it back in. But it's, it's things like that that just, just these, the parts are getting significantly ex expensive the older these machines get. But we're in... You know, we're, um, I think, like I said, the, the equipment's in good shape now, um, and I think we could, um, hoping that we can stay within that, you know, um, budget figure. I'm, I'm guessing that our, my additional expenses may be about an extra 2000 because the chipper took that much money away, and I, I've got places to take it from as long as nothing major happens. And, and nothing significantly changes. So I've I've, I've looked there and, and uh, for the extra monies, and I've got a plan to put in place. It's just a question of whether or not anything significant happens to the machine. Can, can you share that plan with us? Well, basically, I took about four thousand dollars from payroll, um, twenty one hundred from. Seed and topsoil account, and thirteen hundred from the. I didn't physically take it. This right. is where I'm assuming it's going to be left. Next, place that it. came up the first time I went through. I came up with seventy four hundred bucks. I said, okay, well, my estimate's seven thousand dollars. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I wasn't again, as I mentioned, I didn't expect to spend three thousand dollars on the chipper. So I went back and looked. I could probably pull another thousand out of payroll, maybe, um, and then. I'm looking at the same places again, you know, and maybe an extra 700 out of the, the bunker restoration, 300 out of the seed and top dressing, and then so that gives me an extra 2,000. So all told, I can, you know, if things go the way the plan, you can save 9,000. You have 9,400 dollars to save from. You've already spent 6,297 of that, so you're looking at basically 3,000 
103 to carry you for the from now until the end of June, if it'll carry us. And I'm hoping it will. I mean, hopefully, I mean, we've got that. You, you don't know until you get into it and, and what happens. But that's what I'm. That's what I'm going with. I have to. I mean, there's not. I mean, I'm a little. I'm concerned about gas. We have five thousand dollars left for gasoline and diesel fuel to carry us through the rest of the year. If you remember, we decided to cut that gasoline count back to twenty grand, and um, hopefully the price stays where it is and it doesn't go up. And the other thing I was concerned about is was the uh, is the energy, just because we had to spend some of that on trash that we didn't think we were going to have to spend. So. Um, and hopefully, that, I mean, hopefully it gets warm in the end of March real quick, so I don't have to spend any more money on propane. So. But that's where that's where we sit with that. So in in you know overall, I anticipated a seven thousand dollar expense. I had the opportunity to save seven thousand four hundred. Now we're in with the with the cost of the chipper. It, that seven thousand went to nine thousand. So. Basically, we're going to try to have keep our costs within three thousand dollars for the remainder of the year. See how that works. Like I said, oh, it should. Um, everything's fixed and running well. Just see, we have to see when we get into the season. Chipper needed a new engine. Chipper needed a new engine, and once you had the new engine, there was a there was a uh, magneto on the back of the engine. The controls. Um, you have a uh, a sensor um, that senses the speed at which the uh, chipper is turning, and without putting any load on the chipper, it's, it's turning 3,600 RPMs. When you put a load on it, when it gets down to a certain point, the automatic shutoff is supposed to stop it, so the engine can catch back up. It's automatic feed, and then it feeds it again. Well, not only do you have to get a new engine. But the automatic feed that we had wasn't working properly with the old engine, and it wouldn't work with the new one because the wiring harness was completely different. So we had to get a new magneto set up, we had to get a new automatic feed set up, and we had to get a new hydraulic motor that attaches to drive that, the spinning wheel and the, uh, the feeding wheel into the machine. And trying to get those matched up with the new engine and trying to deal with cleaves and we couldn't get them from cleaves so you had to go to direct bandit and bandit had to send them the cleaves and then cleaves had to send them over to you and it was just it was wasn't any fun and then that chipper's you know about 20 years old and, and the, i think the folks down south before it came up here is we bought that from valley crest um, and i think they jerry-rigged it a little bit because the wiring that was on I and mean, there's a lot of wires on that thing that didn't go anywhere and um, the newer parts wouldn't, wouldn't, just wouldn't fit. We had actually, Norm had to make a, uh, a, new, um, a, a new support to hold the, uh, the automatic start because of, because of the change in the engine, it wouldn't fit where it was. Had to get a different muffler so it would exhaust in the right spot. It was, it was fun. You're running into the same thing. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know if anybody's made, um, Steve and I met with the finance committee and uh, reported, uh, went through the budget line items. There didn't seem to be uh, too many. I mean, we walked through any of those, the questions that they had and uh, submitted it. Um, I mean, Julie did speak with Steve and I with regards to uh, the leases that she had to sign that were on her desk and she's been really you know, bogged down with her responsibilities, but uh, she was aware that they need to be signed and that was on her list of things to do. So she had one <coughs> adjustment, and I don't know if she mentioned that to you. They, the salaries for the treasurer collector went from five three, fifty three fifty three to fifty three twenty five. It actually was a little bit less. So she was, you know, when she when she compared the numbers, they didn't come out the same. But was, was, that was after the meeting. That well during the she. When she printed the new copies for you guys, it had the right number in it. It's just that the one we had previous to printing the new copies yeah, had, had the old, had a different number on. But the the ones that were discussed at the meeting were the right ones. I just didn't know if she had said that out. I thought it was 
It was pretty smooth, actually. Mm -hmm. A lot of, uh, which was, it was, it was kind of, um, every, they, everybody had a lot of good things that they've heard from people outside of the, via the golf course. So everybody knew somebody that had spoken well of the golf course, which is kind of rewarding in itself, but it's good to have that reputation out there and getting it back from our uh, finance committee members. So works. Tuesday we go before the Board of Selectmen for the budget review. What time is that? What time is that? I don't know. I the twenty fifth. Um, is it? A, I just twenty fifth. You. It's. I think you're. Oh, geez, I can't get it because I don't have the Wi-Fi password in here. But I think it's like five fifteen. Five something. They, I had. I saw the email today. I read it, but I didn't. Uh, you're second. It might be later than that because you're right after the guy from PJ Keating. So <laughs> that might take it. That might delay you. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's right. He did send me that. Oh, let me see if I can. We put it once, and I'll save it. Hopefully. See if I can get find it. I should be able to tell I'll try and go if I can. Hopefully, that would be nice. Uh, because also on that agenda, I believe, is indirect costs discussion. Yes, oh, that's uh, close to the end. So, depending on what that discussion is, Tom. I don't have anything at work that day, so I should be happy. Um, indirect costs. I will be focused on things like a, a system controller, collector. Yeah. Eliminate. Right, they can't double if, dip on that. Yeah, they can't double dip on that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it would be inter interesting discussion, and that's my two cents. That's the case. We need to go through and eliminate any indirect reimbursement that's come out of our expense item expenses. Hopefully it just dies, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully. Right, so that's it was up what was up? Two point two percent? The end? Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. that, that fee is I don't think that's a mandatory fee, is it? No. In the the indirect cost. Oh, yeah, we've gone through no. this. Right. No, that's <laughs> yeah, you're right. We we don't don't yeah, take the line. <laughs> well, we brought it up so many times. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not so no. yet. I don't think it will ever be, but some people just have it on their agenda day in and well, day out. Not you until know, you pay, the, pay off the debt. Exactly. Yeah, 1.9 well. million right. left. Yeah. Right. It will not be. So it's nice to a few years from now. common sense. Right. See you in seven years. Yeah. There you go. And then implement that. In what, 23 years now? Get through a few more. Hey, when uh, well, it's already <coughs> there, what are you looking at? No, I have to wait till the weather. See what the weather's like. I mean, this weekend's supposed to be 54. I'm not worried about this weekend. I'm worried well, about the middle of March. <laughs> <laughs> How about yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <coughs> So, I guess we got just our next meeting day. First Thursday that I am available would be March 25th. I think that's a Wednesday. Like it. Oh, yeah. 25 is a one step. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I dropped it on Yeah, it's in the soup, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the soup. 26, John. Stir it. Six. <clears throat> and hopefully we'll be open by then. Yeah. What time is that? 6? 26. 26. At 4.30 here? 4.30. March 26th. 4.30. I owe you a pen. Or something. Out of I guess that's it for the uh, agenda. Yeah, yeah. Into a jar. Make a motion. March 26th. 
Thank you.